Hello, in this video I want to show you how we can use the BSP Precious from Unreal with a Houdini building generator. Here in Unreal I have some modular models and the idea is that I want to automatically procedurally place them on a BSP layout. So here in Unreal we have geometry and we have these boxes or other shapes so I'm mainly going to use boxes for blocking out the house. So I have this here and I can switch here now to a uh, editing mode. So brush editing and we now have some tools to manipulate the shape so I can move around for example here this primitive and I can now build a shape for a house. So I'm going to make something super simple like this and later on I will of course uh, come back to it. So we can also go here and uh, do some extrude so I can for example extrude this face and this face so I have a bit more complex house so we can always go back to editing and change it like this so this is a basic bsp uh, workflow so just creating really basic shapes and then i want to use houdini so i'm going to go back here to normal mode and houdini will then automatically try and fit these modular assets here on the side of these so we don't have to manually place this and decorate the house so let's now jump into houdini so here in Houdini I have an empty scene and I'm just going to start out with a geometry node and in there I'm going to make a small digital asset first and what I want to do with this digital asset is to load in a BSP data and for that I'm going to use an object merge node. So there are other ways you can do this but I always like to use an object merge node. So we're going to create a sub network from this so I'm going to click here then we're going to right click and we can create a digital asset or a version digital asset. We can choose a one of those. So with first digital assets, we can create uh, easy multiple versions and iterations on uh, your HDA. So we can call this PSP houses. Continue. And I'm going to save this in the default folder. And it's created. So now I have a basic tool here. So let's go also to our uh, editor settings. So in parameters, we're going to expose some values of that uh, object merge node here. So let me find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag here the this object level. So I'm going to drag this in here. And I also notice that the naming of the node is also automatically here. So we have object merge object. So if you don't want that, disable the prefix. So the prefix can be enabled here by default. So if I drop this in now, I only have the same name as I that we had as we had here. So that's the main thing to actually input a BSP brush. What is also interesting to do as well is to expose this transform setting. This can also be really interesting. So I'm gonna click apply on this and before I'm testing this tool, let me also do a alignment here. So match size. And in this node, I can align the input. So whenever we have geometry coming in, we will center everything. But I want, don't want to center on the Y. I want to change this to a minimum. So now I'm going to click apply. And I'm going to go into Unreal and test out this tool. So here in Unreal, I have my HDA, so PSP houses version one. So let me drag and drop that in here. So at the moment, this tool won't be doing much, but we have here our uh, Houdini parameters and we have this really specific menu. So what I can do with this is I can now go to World Outliner. And with World Outliner, I can basically start selecting a object so I can select this bsp brush that i had over here so we can use this in my tool so now as you can see i have the exact same result here that we had from uh, the bsp into actually geometry from houdini so this went through the houdini system and it, it also perfectly aligned with my pivot here of my uh, hda because i had that alignment node so this is the first step, just showing you how we can get this BSP brush information. Now, next step is building a, a house generator with this. What can also be interesting is that we actually use the session sync. 
So we can always go here and open session sync if we want to. So I'm going to try this. So I'm going to click open session sync. Then by default, it will also launch a version of Houdini. So Houdini is now connected to Unreal and I can also see this uh, global nodes. And that definitely means that we are connected to Unreal. So now here they are side by side. And if I now would uh, rebuild here my tool, you will actually have the same result in my view here. So we see here now multiple objects and we actually see two of them. So uh, these two are actually the input information. So this is the original input coming from Unreal. So this is the here, this gray one. And then this tool here over this node is then actually where my uh, tool is. So this is the setup that we did earlier. So now what we can do as well is we can just right click and allow editing. And we can now continue to build like this. We can use the labs building tool. So we can just type in here building and we can now generate buildings. So plug that in over here. And let's see what we will get. So you will also automatically see that it imported this information. So we have the same results with the same colors. Only the difference here is that we did not set any normal direction. So it got a bit confused when exporting this. So let me quickly make this a bit bigger. And we're going to see and change the settings here. So I'm going to enable the wireframe so I can uh, so I can clearly see the floors. And I'm going to set the floor height to 4 because I find the value 4 to be a decent scale uh, for floor heights in game. Now, since my BSP brush is quite different, different in value, so you can see that it's, that it's not calculating any floors here. You can also here enable a setting called Snap Input Geometry based on the floor height number. So it will look at number 4 and it will snap the geometry. So if I enable this, we can see that it sort of like cleaned up that geometry and sort of tried to fit in the floors based on my value 4. So if I now go into Unreal, I can see that I have again the same result. So now the next step would be creating a instance of these modular models I have here and replace the base temporary geometry I have here with the instances. So I can decide now to actually further work with session sync or later continue working with it. But we can also, for example, here just uh, close the connection and we can always later on uh, reconnect it if we want to. So for this stage, I might uh, close this for the moment and do a bit more of the Houdini work. And we are back at, in Houdini. Also notice one more thing is that I did not actually save my tool when I was connected with session sync. So I have to place my building tool there again. So if you're using session sync, make sure you're also saving out the results. So let me bring back that building tool. And again, we're going to set this to number four and we're going to snap the inputs. So currently I don't have any inputs. So for temporarily viewing this, we're just going to use a box and scale this up to four. And now we have something like this. So just some temporarily working values. So also here in secondary, I'm going to enable the bottom and top ledges. And now I'm ready to input my own models. So here we have multiple inputs. So we have an input for custom modules. We have an input for hand placing modules and also volumetric overrides. So I'm only going to use here custom modules. And we need another tool for that. So we have a tool called building utilities. And this will basically assign a, a base value. So I'm going to use another box here for demo. So this will be my wall. I'm going to reset this quickly. And this is, for example, then my wall. I'm going to plug that in over here. So I can call this wall, for example, 0, 1. And the dimensions of this wall are 1 by 1. So it is 1 width and 1 in the height. I can also give this a color for visualizing if I want to. So let me give this a green color, like so. 
and plug that in over here. So building modules. Now in the tool itself, we're going to go to primary and we're going to go here to our pattern. So module pattern. And we're going to use the same name we set up here. So we're going to copy paste this. So control C, control V. And now we should see our walls here. Now we can see one issue here is that my walls are not rotated correctly. So I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees. And I'm also going to use a match align here. And I'm going to make sure my box is decently aligned. So this is the better alignment here. Maybe let's make this box a bit bigger because I only have one piece here. So let's make it a bit bigger like this. You can also make it a bit higher. And again, we can also enable here the snapping modules. So the green part is a instance of a model and then the normal geometry color is new generated geometry. We can also here do a bit more complex things and for example, boolean two boxes in each other. So we can create a more complex shape something if we union this and we can do something like this maybe it looks a bit more complex so here's a bit more complex situation for the tool so now what we want to do is to actually create more uh, modules here because i will have again i had three different models a door wall and a window so to do this we actually need to change the naming here a bit so I'm just going to keep the name wall and then I'm going to put a A here. So this is a uh, variation number A. Then we can copy this over here and then we have a variation number B. So I'm going to create this as a blue one. So change the color, merge these together and give this here as input. So now instead of using this name wall, we're just going to type in wall like this. So you can see that we have some more variation there. We also have here the seed value to change this a bit more. And we have some more variation there. And we can keep building on this if we want to. We can also here have corners. So in this case, we can also remove the corners or add corners. So we can keep building more and more of these modules and assign them to each position. So I'm going to skip this part and make some of my models. So here I made some models. So I have a corner and I have these two walls here. So I can quickly go in here and show you. So I have now here three different models. So I have one for my door, my walls, so A and B. And further here, I also have, this is mainly for the, the corner points. So I have here like a small corner model, just so like a bevel on the edge with a, with a box. So it's just like left corner, this is then the right corner, this is then inwards, and so on. So we can have a lot of uh, setup there. So you can see here that I used the wall and then these corners, so you can use them as well. Now furthermore, what I also want to do is, uh, is to use my door on the first floor. So we can go here to customization and we can override it. So we can here have the settings, so we have the same settings as before. I'm also going to double check if the top and bottom notches are off. Then we can basically add our door here. So what we need to do is we just need to get the name of my door, which in my case was wall door. And then we just add this. And you can see that now I have this red box here, which is representing my uh, door module. So now I have specifically placed doors on the bottom part here. So that will make it a bit more interesting. I can always later on use this data and tweak it a bit more. So we're going to use here the second output, which is the point cloud. First output is basically the geometry you're seeing now, but I want to have the point clouds. So now I want to assign instances to each uh, module. And we're going to do that by the value replace node. This is also a lab tools, the value replace. So now I want to press this button and we're going to search for the attribute called name. So let's press this button. And I can see I have for each model I have in my scene, I have a wall C, I have a corner, I have the side slope, 
I have another corner and so on. So for each of this model, I want to assign the path uh, to the asset. Now, before I do that, I'm also going to delete here the site slope because I won't need that. So here, we can just use a blast node, for example. Blast. And we can just blast away these specific parts. So in this case, I want to blast away the side slope. So these are points here where we have these gray areas, which basically mean that we will generate a new uh, geometry. So these are points can just be deleted. So this. Is. And then we can also do basically the reverse here. So we're going to just say add the generated slope. You want to then invert this because this is a new geometry that I need for my wall. So currently, if the area is too small, it will generate new geometry there. Unless you have like smaller modular models, it will then try to fit these modular models. But I have quite large walls, so the tool doesn't really want to fit a big wall into such a small space because it will be heavily stretched when once it is open in the game engine. So now how do we get a model pad in here? So we have to go here in Unreal and I have my basic models here. So I have door, wall and wall. So I'm just going to right click on my door and I'm going to copy the reference. Then this is then pasted here. So we're going to just paste the reference here. And we want to do this then for each uh, model. So just right click, copy reference, paste it here. So I have done that for everything, of course, not for the slide swap because we don't need that. We can even uh, delete this if we want to. So we only have our walls, doors and corner. That's it. I don't have anything else here. Now, to continue, we also need to rename this name attribute to a Unreal instance. So when we load this in Unreal, it knows that it needs to instance. Now, at this point, we can already go here, save our asset. And we can already test this out if the first stage is working. So here I have my tool and we're going to just rebuild our asset. And now I have here my building. So it's the same result that I had in Houdini, but now here, of course, in Unreal. So the basic boxes that I created are also here now. So then the next step would be then logical to actually use the BSP's input instead of the basic boxes I had here. So we can also further enable here the side slopes here so we don't have these big gaps here so we can always like manipulate the data like you, uh, maybe you can say like we have too much doors like play around here with this data and we can always bring in for example a wrangle here and we can just ask the the door here so if the name is equal to door maybe you replace it with a wall or a window so i have less of these walls or window. That's just a quick option there. If you want to have some control in there, uh, we can always manipulate some data afterwards. So now let's bring these together. So we're just going to bring down the merge nodes and I'm going to first merge my instances and then the geometry. Then furthermore, we actually need a material there. So we're just going to type in material. So Unreal Material, place it down here. And I'm going to then basically do the same thing that I did for my instances. I need to get the pad from the material that I want. So here in real, I have all my materials and I have a basic world alignment. So it fits with my material. So copy and reference and we're just going to paste it here. Then let's again save this out and test this. So when I build my house now, I only have these uh, geometry now. I don't see my instances. So if I look closer into the menu, we actually here have outputs and we are seeing our instances here. So they are somewhat working, but we are not seeing them. And the issue is here because of a scaling value. So I'm going to go back into Houdini and adjust that. So here in Houdini, we are merging two different results together. So we will have conflicting attributes. So here in our instances, we have a value called scale. So this controls X, Y and Z of the scaling. Now here with our geometry, we have the value P scale. So this is the uniform scale or the overall scale of a certain object. So when merging the two together, if I go here to spreadsheet, we will here have an issue that our P scale is zero and our normal scale has the normal value. So it will multiply these two values by each other 
so it will result in a scale of zero overall. Simple way to fix this is to use the create attribute option. And in there, we are naming a new attribute called pscale, and we are giving this the value one. So that will fix the issue. So save and try it out. So in here, just click rebuild. And as you can see, we have now here our house. So everything is here complete. I have the base house. Models are placed nicely and I have a nice result. So we can further keep building on this, add more props, add a nice roof system here. Right now it's just open. But for this video, I'm not going to go super in depth on this. We just have the basic system of our house working. And we now have the freedom to continue building on this and take it any direction now. If you want something like a quick roof, we can always go back here to our input geometry and we can use the split by normal option here so just plug that in over here and everything that is looking upward so the y-axis is for example here my roof so if i would use this for example over here so merge these like so we now have a basic roof here we also need to uh, snap this on the height so to snap this i just grab the wrangle and I just use the rent function to round the value to its closest position here. So we have a nice roof set up there. You should also be able to use the fuse node here with some grip snapping that also might be able to work. But this is just a really simple uh, roof setup here. So now let's also plug in our uh, BSB brushes. So I'm going to replace my boxes with my PSP here. Uh, we can also use an if if switch here. So if there is no input, we can use our basic cubes. We can use the type and we can use here the element count, for example. By default, it's already doing what I want. So when my first input has no geometry, that means it has the value zero. So there are zero elements or number of points in there. So it will be one. So it will equal to one. And if I, for example, have geometry in there, so you can see that this switch is then outputting the other result. So this can automatically be a solution for a switch here. So lastly, also here as well, let's place down an output node. So we are always outputting this here and save. Now in Unreal, let's rebuild our tool. And by default here, it already remembered that I wanted to add here this box brush. So you can see that my building is now the same as this PSP here. So let me bring them a bit closer. So we have a really similar result. So again, we only like snapped the box so we can actually fit in our models. So, but now I can go back here to my BSP and I can go into editing. And in editing, we can, for example, make this a uh, longer. I'm gonna move this like so. And I can see my Houdini tool is automatically adjusting to it. So notice that I've also uh, centered the input. So remember, when I input a BSP, I'm also centering this in my world of Houdini. So this will help with the building generator here. But if you don't want it, you can always disable that, but I like it to be centered. So you can also keep building on this. I can extrude the side here again. We have more variation there. You can also go, for example, here, make this a bit more unique in shape. So this makes it a bit cooler. We have a nice cutoff here. Uh, so again, here we can always like uh, hook this up to Session Sync to also visually see in the background what's going on. It is possible that your BSP geometry is not clean enough for the tools to work with. So then you might need to double check in Session Sync what's going on. Something that I can recommend doing here is also using the flatten edges and dissolve so this will help with the tool so let's say your input maybe looks something like this so maybe some geometry is not clean enough we can then use this for example here in the flatten and we can get rid of some of the of some of the geometry there so we can clean this a bit up we can always do some fusing adding some more tweaks in there and again this is just like a really base setup to work with like we only used a few nodes here but we already have a cool interactive building generator working with houdini and a neural engine so that was actually it for this video so i showed you how you can build this tool 
So I'll show you how I can use the BSP with the building tool from Houdini. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.